think this picture might show it a little bit better. The oxygen, this is from a different book, but the oxygen, the, the blood comes into the uh, superior and inferior vena cava into the right atrium, gets pumped down here through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, and the right ventricle pumps it, and it can't go back this way because that valve, and so it goes up this way. And this is the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary trunk is this part of it, and it branches off, and some of the blood goes to the left lung, and some of the blood goes to the right lung. Are you all with me here? Mm -hmm. These little fibers that you see there, you'll see that when we cut the heart open. They're called cordae tendini, and they hold the valve. They keep it from shutting and opening backwards. Those little cords there are important. You can hear the valves when they snap shut. They make a sound. And if you're listening with a stethoscope to your heart, you can hear it. It sounds like... Those are the valves shut. When the valves close because the blood's being pumped. The valves shut, they make a thump sound. And so these two valves, they shut at the same time as the blood on the bottom of the heart is pumped upward and out, these two valves close shut. These valves shut. That's the first sound. It's called a lub sound. And then there's a second set of valves. This, these valves here and the valve that leads to the aorta that's not shown in this picture, but it's shown in the other one. Um, when this valve and the aortic valve snap shut, that's the second sound of the, of the heart. Have y'all ever listened to your heartbeat? I got some stethoscopes in there. I'll, I'll let y'all listen to your heartbeat. Very interesting. There you can see the aortic valve. So, the end of the right side, down to the right ventricle, to the lungs, where it picks up oxygen, then back from the lungs, through the pulmonary veins, these are actually red colored veins because they have oxygenated blood, and they bring the oxygenated blood back from the lungs into the left ventricle. The left side of the heart gets blood from the lungs. And here are a couple here that lead to the left ventricle too. They come in the back way, so you can't see them there. But this left, fit, I'm sorry, this left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs. And then the top of the heart squeezes and pushes the blood down to the left ventricle. And then the left ventricle gives a big squeeze and pushes the blood into the aorta. That's the largest artery in the body. And the aorta takes the blood everywhere in the body to deliver that oxygen. You can see the aorta's got a big curve to it. And then little vessels that lead off. These vessels go to the head and arms. And the big trunk of the aorta goes down to the trunk of the body and the legs. We call this valve on this side the bicuspid valve because it only has two cusps. And kids get that mixed up. So the right side of the heart is the tricuspid valve. The left side of the heart is the bicuspid valve. I always remember it, it's right to try. The right side of the heart is the tricuspid. This valve is easy. That's the aortic valve. The aortic valve leads to the aorta. And there's also a valve leading to the pulmonary artery here. It's called the pulmonary valve, which is shown in this picture here. There's the pulmonary valve. So the pulmonary valve leads to the pulmonary artery. They call it a semi-lunar valve, but it's called the pulmonary valve. Semi-lunar means half moon, and the little cusps are shaped like half moons. In your book, they call it the pulmonary valve. I got a few videos. You want to see the heart beating? Yes. 
The ventricular contraction causes the atrioventricular
is between the atria and the ventricle. Those are the atrioventricular right. valves. The second set of valves are the semilunar valves, the pulmonary valve, which is here, or the aortic valve. Ventricles begin to contract. Rising semilunar valves are forced open. Blood back pressure forces the semilunar valve. There we go. So if it went don't, don't swish, don't, don't swish, don't, don't swish, in which they often hear, that's the swishing is because the blood is leaking back in between the valve and it makes a swish sound. So if you have a heart murmur, it's because the valves aren't working right. And that usually, that can often happen in people. And they'll go in there and try and fix the valve, do a heart surgery. Pretty serious surgery. That sounds like fun. Open heart surgery. You've got to cut your heart open. What's that really like? It's like a really big surgery where they have to um, open your chest and they have to uh, unclog one of the main veins in your heart. They have yeah, bypass. yeah, those are, um, there's all sorts of problems there. There's, uh, um, and we're going to talk about that next. Ooh, there's a heart. Let me show you some of these vessels on the surface of the heart, is what you're asking about. Oh, uh, here we go. Look at this picture. This picture, see all these blood vessels that cover the surface of the heart? Those blood vessels provide oxygen to the heart muscle itself. And we call those coronary arteries. Coronary arteries come out of the aorta and go deliver oxygen to the heart itself. And if one of those coronary arteries become blocked with fat or cholesterol, then your heart itself doesn't give, isn't getting any um, oxygen, and it'll stop beating, and that's a heart attack. <clears throat> Y'all ever heard of a heart attack? Mm -hmm. Likely several in here will die of heart attacks, including me, it's possible. I'm planning on not dying ever. But um, anyway, so if they got if that becomes clogged, what they do is they go in there with a little balloon or something, and they cut open the thing, and they can help sort of try to clean out where the blockage is. Often they'll pump a chemical, like you saw yesterday. Did you see that? Yep. They pumped a chemical into the guy, and it busted up the clogged artery. And sometimes you do what's called a bypass. Let's say there's a clog right there. And so that means the rest of the heart down here is not getting any blood. What you can do is you can take another little vein, and they usually take it from your leg. Because you've got some extra veins in your leg that you can kind of do without, because there's redundancy there, there's some other veins. And they'll take a little vein or a little artery in your leg, and they'll attach, attach it to one end here, and they'll bypass the blockage. They'll tie it into one end, and they'll tie it into the other here. And the blood will go right around the blockage. That's called a bypass. And some people might have to have that, have, they might have three blockages, so they have to get three <coughs> bypasses done. That's a triple bypass. How do you, you ever heard of that? Wouldn't you just have a heart attack after the first one? How do you get three? Oh, well, you could have you could have some areas that are very clogged, but still a little bit of blood is getting through, and so you haven't had the heart attack yet. Okay, so but it's you're like gonna have it. it. So they do the bypass, yeah, to prevent it. Anyone here want to be a heart surgeon? Make a lot of money. You all like money? <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to do this stuff. I think Dow's going to be a heart surgeon. You can make a lot. Are you going to be a heart surgeon, Dow? Brain surgeon? Yeah, I'm on. What kind of surgeon? He's gonna have like 12 kids and be a heart surgeon. Oh, maybe you'll maybe you'll change your mind. Um, how about some views of the heart in real time? That's awesome. Do it. Do it again, do it again. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again.
Decision. Do you live live your own life. No, he says there's something else he has to show us. Okay. I didn't get to this. These You're welcome. Little, uh, guys. I gave you the good tissue. advice. This is the pacemaker of the heart. It's called the SA node, and it's like nerve tissue that's buried in the heart muscle. And that SA node, that's your pacemaker. SA stands for sinoatrial node, but you don't have to know that. It's called the SA node. And it sends out a little electrical impulse once a second that spreads across the top of the heart. You can see this fiber going this way. That brings the electrical signal across the top of the heart, and it spreads through the walls of the both atria at about the same time so that both atria contract and push blood down at about the same time. Then there's another bit of nerve tissue that picks that signal up. And that nerve tissue fires a signal on its own that runs down through the middle of the walls of the heart and spreads upward through the walls of the ventricles here. And ends in these little tiny fibers called Purkinje fibers, named after the guy who discovered them. 
and ends in the walls of the ventricles. So the top of the heart will contract, and another signal will run down through here, and then the bottom of the heart will contract. So it goes top contract, then a pause, then bottom contract. And that will just occur over and over about once a second. The signal is supposed to stop at the ends of these Purkinje fibers. But if, if a person is overweight, well, and this happens a lot, and it happened in the video they showed, um, if a person is, is too overweight and the walls of the heart grow thicker, these Purkinje fibers can grow longer. And the Purkinje fiber, the, the electrical signal can come down this wire here and come back up and touch one of these other extensions right here. And what that'll do is it'll get an electrical impulse that goes around and around. Electricians call this a short circuit. You ever heard of a short circuit before? Mm -hmm. And what'll happen if a person gets too obese, the walls of the heart will get thicker and thicker to try and pump that blood through this large person. And these little fibers might touch and form a short circuit. And then the electrical impulse just goes around and around, and the ventricle of the heart just goes like this. It's called a ventricle fibrillation. And that means no, no blood is able to get down into the ventricle because the ventricle is just going like this. It's not letting any blood get in it before it pumps. And that person will die very quickly unless you stop that fibrillation. So what you do is you go get the defibrillator, and tear off the shirt, they put the defibrillator on, Claire. they shoot about 10,000 volts of current, I don't know what it is, it's a very large number, and that will stop the electrical impulse that's going around. It will basically shock the whole heart and all the cells will stop, and hopefully it will restart sending a new signal and the little short circuit will be broken. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, the guy will die, and if it does work, the guy's okay, and usually they then say, okay, now you got to lose some weight because the walls of your heart are too thick. Uh, the soccer team is supposed to be checked out. Like, yeah. Are you serious? Uh, he's lying to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. He's not lying. You guys better leave. Get out of here and don't come back. But good luck and go night. I like your jacket, Eliza. Two potentials originate in the sinoatrial node. Okay, watch it here. Listen. Here we go. Here's the electrical signal comes out of that SA node. Then the AV node picks it up. The AV node sends the signal downward. Spreads out through the ventricles. Did y'all quit talking and watch this? Spreads out through the ventricles. And so they show it here, see if you can follow it. The rapid conduction from the atrioventricular bundle to the ends of the Purkinje fibers allows the ventricular muscle cells to contract in unison, providing a strong contraction. So the electrical, the electrical charge goes over the top of the heart, and then the top squeezes, so blood goes down. And the electrical charge continues to the bottom of the heart, and the bottom squeezes, and blood goes up. Yay. Okay, so that, that pulls you through 13.3, basically. And uh, then tomorrow we'll do the next few sections on the vessels. What you can do now for the last 10 minutes is get started on these ID sheets. Yay. Now you can hurry.